World of Warcraft has evolved massively over the years. Nearly every core feature has changed. While Blizzard has been active in adding new features like dragon flying and warbands, they've been equally active in removing features, including some beloved features as well. From raid attunements to weapon skill level ups, let's talk about some of the biggest feature removals in WoW history. Let's talk about talent trees. Starting in 2004, it really was the wild west of talent trees. There was so much freedom to experiment. This was a time when class identity was really the big draw here. It wasn't about playing a specific spec. Players could experiment. You could have a shaman as a tank, for example, even if that wasn't the original game design. Or you didn't have to be a shadow priest, for example. You could be a Frankenstein combination of shadow and disc, and even still get a raid spot. This was a time of more fun and experimentation than it was pure class balancing. Many of the specs we know and love today, like Prod Paladin, for example, they were very flawed. Prod Paladins didn't even have taunt back in vanilla. It really wasn't until Wrath and Kana that the freedom aspect of the talent system really started to take a backseat. It was in Wrath that Spec started to take really center stage. Instead of just being a mage, you were a fire mage. Then in Cataclysm, you were forced to go all the way down a talent tree before going to a different tree, so it just completely killed hybrid Specs. These changes were also where dual Spec came into play. After all, if you're forcing a healer to have only healer talents, they're really going to need to have the option to have another spec so they can, say, farm in the open world. If you fast forward to the modern day WoW, the Cataclysm era changes really have remained more or less. The concept of hybrids and just picking and choosing between the different trees, that is long gone. You're forced to pick between one of three different specs. Then you have two talent trees to fill out, your class talent tree and then your individual spec talent tree. Ultimately, customization is based on what sort of content you're doing. For me, if I'm doing Mythic Plus, I'm going to have a very different talent build than if I'm doing, say, a raid, for example. Because there was such a charm around the original talent trees, it's surprising to a lot of players that Blizzard went so far away from them. But really lost in the discussion about the old talent trees is the fact that these old talent trees really did have a lot of problems. Modern WoW limiting the sort of freedom you had, the hybridization being gone. It does have its drawbacks, but ultimately it allows Blizzard to really focus on making the specs viable. Perhaps more importantly though, it lets Blizzard really focus on making the specs actually fun to play. Plus, from a modern balancing perspective, it just makes way more sense to limit players to a specific set of specs. It's less for the balance team to have to worry about when balancing around raids, and it's also just less of a chance of something really overpowered slipping through. So another system gone forever from modern WoW, it's the weapon skill system. In 2004, to level a new weapon, you had to actually go to a trainer and purchase the weapon skill. That's no problem. Then you take your new weapon, you go to Ragnaros, you kick some butt. Except not so fast. You still gotta level your weapon skill all the way up to 300. See, if you didn't have max weapon skill, you'd be missing attacks, you'd be getting dodged, you'd be getting parried. It's just a nightmare for trying to output maximum damage. I still have fond memories of getting a new maze in Nexramus immediately going out to rush out to level up my weapon skill as quickly as I could. The idea of leveling up your weapon skill was a very well-intentioned system. It would allow you to progress with your new weapons and feel more and more powerful. The problem was that players really found the idea of leveling a weapon skill for several hours to be really boring. The other problem was that it even dissuaded players from getting new weapons and trying new things. There were also racial balancing problems around weapon skill. Orcs, for example, had additional axe weapon skill, while some races like dwarves had extra gun skill. By Cataclysm, Blizzard had decided that weapon skill was too much of a headache, and they just scrapped the system entirely. Cataclysm really was a time to scrap cumbersome systems and try to streamline the game as well. Another system on the chopping block was unfortunately ammo. Back in vanilla WoW, hunters had to carry giant bags full of ammo based on which weapon they had. I remember always keeping a quiver of arrows stocked up on my character. Unfortunately, I also remember one time forgetting my arrows entirely, doing this whole BFD run as a kid with no arrows just getting made fun of the entire time. In Cataclysm, Blizzard finally decided to get rid of the ammo system entirely. See, the reason it took so long was that a lot of players really did like the idea of hunters having to use ammo. It was exactly the kind of quirk that made Classic WoW special in the first place. But it was also exactly the kind of clunky and burdensome gameplay that Blizzard really wanted to get rid of in Cataclysm. Another way that Blizzard has historically looked to streamline the game experience is with new starting areas. As a kid, my very first experience was logging into a gnome in Dunmoreau. That feeling of awe looking at that amazing snowy landscape. 
A lot of players, meanwhile, have good memories of logging into a human in Northshire Abbey for the first time. Throughout the years, Blizzard has done a number of things to try to streamline the leveling process and really streamline those starting areas so that players don't quit before they've even started the game. It started in TBC with new streamlined starting areas for Blood Elves and Draenei. These areas were not only gorgeous, but they were also stacked with all sorts of really easy and rewarding quests. Another hint of things to come was when Blizzard added new starting zones for gnomes and trolls. They were using these new starting areas to give new backstory, new lore, but also to streamline the experience for new players. Now in Modern WoW, we have this completely new starting experience. It's all designed to teach players all the new systems, and really ideally to stop players from getting frustrated and quitting. That experience is called Exile's Reach. It's 1 through 10 leveling, culminating in a big dungeon you have to complete. It does seem like a logical idea for developers to want to put their best foot forward, to give players the best possible starting experience, with the best graphics, the best gameplay, the best tutorials possible. It really doesn't make sense to put players in an area that was designed in 2003. There is a real risk to removing these starting areas entirely though. It's likely why Blizzard lets you go back to those old starting areas on new characters, at least once you've done Exile's Reach one time. If you lose those magical memories that I have, for example, of going back to Dunmoreau, you're kind of losing a part of why you liked the game in the first place. Perhaps it's one of the biggest reasons why Classic WoW came back. We all have those amazing memories we want to revisit, but at the same time, the game has to move on as well. There is one system that very few of us have good memories of, though. That system is raid and dungeon attunements. Back in the day in Classic and TBC, it felt like every major raid had some kind of huge quest line of attunements. Perhaps the biggest of those quest lines was the legendary Onyxia quest chain. That chain took you all around Azeroth and it could take multiple days to complete. Perhaps the breaking point of attunements, though, was the giant Black Temple attunement quest chains. The list of quests was so extensive that entire add-ons had to be made just to track all the steps. Really, from that point forward, Blizzard started to realize that maybe gating half your player base with these giant quest chains, it really wasn't the best way to showcase these awesome, expensive dungeons you spent so much time on. It was really in Cataclysm that a new solution came into play. The idea was to gate content really based on item level more than achievements. You had to go out and get gear, and once you had a certain item level or gear score, then you'd finally be allowed in the dungeon. There definitely were some achievements after Cataclysm, with some dungeons being locked behind reputations, even achievements. But really, for almost all dungeons in Modern WoW, the system remains the same. You get your gear strong enough, then you can just walk in the front door. Now, while there are plenty of systems on this list that make me sad that they got removed, the raid achievement systems are not one of them. But still, the never-ending focus on gear score and item level, they really weren't the perfect solution either, and the debates still rage on to this day. Less controversial of a removal, though, was the decision to move away from resistance gear. Back in Classic, you could get gear with specific resistances on it. The more resistance of, say, fire, for example, the less often you'd be hit by fire damage, and also the less damage you'd take. Back in Vanilla, it was very common for a tank to run, say, a bunch of fire resistance on Ragnaros, for example. Ultimately, the decision to get away from resistance gear, it came down to the developer desire to move away from preparation-based encounters entirely. Back in 2004, the real challenge wasn't the raids. The real challenge was getting 40 players playing the right classes with the right gear with enough time to actually do the progression. If you fast forward to Modern WoW, a lot of the budget is spent on these gorgeous, these challenging mechanical raids. Blizzard doesn't want you to spend hundreds of hours preparing for the raids. They want you to actually do the raids, to enjoy the content. Under no circumstances do they want you to spend your whole weekend getting a bunch of resistance gear. So one of my favorite features that Blizzard unfortunately scrapped almost immediately, it was the guild advancement and leveling system. Your guild would level up with guild experience from completing activities like quests, killing bosses, even completing guild challenges. The key idea for a lot of these activities was to have at least 80% of the people in the group be in your guild. The game was really incentivizing you to play way more with your guild. Then as your guild leveled up, you'd get all sorts of amazing perks like instant guild mail between members. There was also the infamous cash flow perk. It would generate extra gold from every single mob your guild members killed, and that would go directly into the guild bank. The problem was that some of the perks, like the cash flow perk, they really incentivized people to mass spam out invites to everybody. The guild leveling system also disproportionately benefited larger guilds. 
That meant if you had a tight-knit guild of just a few players, you were really disadvantaged. Ultimately, guild experience and leveling was removed in the WAD expansion. So the early systems in WoW, from the weapon skill to the talent trees to the guild levels, even attunements, these systems really did help to shape the WoW that we remember so fondly. That's why for a really long time, I had a lot of resentment against Blizzard for removing so many of these great features. But over time, I have realized that the removal of these systems did come from a good place as well. It's not malicious to want to streamline the game and make a better experience for new players. While the modern WoW we play today is very different than the one we started with, most of these changes were ultimately for the better. Luckily, we'll always have some sort of classic experience to go back to as well when we're looking for something nostalgic. If you like this trip down memory lane, smash that like button and subscribe for more World of Warcraft content. But before we go, I want to hear which discontinued feature you missed the most. Drop a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And if you think I missed anything, let me know. I might even make a part two. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you so much for watching.